Hey guys, it's Nikki here, and here is the Infinix Hot 8 unboxing. So here are the things Infinix included in the box. The first is the micro USB cable, a wall brick, an earphone, and this really nice rubber case. So I actually have the Infinix Hot 7, and as expected, they've been a couple of upgrades. Now, for example, this one is um, slightly heavier than the Hot 7 and other devices within its price range. And yeah, this is as a result of the large battery um, it sports. But despite the weight, I think the Hot 8 still looks better than other devices in the similar price bracket. Never mind. Now guys, I'm not sure whether to call this an upgrade or not, but Infinix switched from a plain plastic build to a glossy gradient finish. And as a result, the device is pretty slippery and it attracts way more fingerprint stains than most devices. Still on the back of the device, you now have a triple camera setup, an upgrade from the dual cameras on this guy. However, if you were, you know, expecting a telephoto or a wide-angled lens, well, hold your horses because you only get a 13 inch main camera and here's how it looks like and how it compares to the Infinix of 7 but moving on to the second camera and it's a portrait lens that can get you results like this finally you have the QVGA camera which is mostly found on webcams so I wonder why Infinix included that to the mix oh before I forget to mention guys, um, you get the same camera layout on most Infinix devices, but Infinix added AR shots to the mode. And like I said in my techno video, ain't nobody got time for that. But that is not to say that some people out there wouldn't like it. Anyway, you can record um, videos in 1080p and as expected, there's no form of stabilization. But I love the fact that Infinix always include like a grid and a leveler in their camera application, which could help monitor the camera shakes and guys i'll be comparing this with other devices in the same price bracket so give me a like if you want me to do that but yeah switching to the front of the device and you'll now have um, the teardrop notch that you can always hide i'm not sure why you would want to do that though but there's also a notification led which serves as the front flash and yeah the bezels on both devices still look the same but one thing i love about the Hot 8 is how tall the display looks especially when you compare it to other brands this year and guys still on the front of the camera you have an 8 mp camera that can get you shots like this one and here's how it compares to the Hot 7 and the spark 3 which one do you guys prefer Moving away from all of that, you still have um, the SIM card and micro SD card slot that has been placed to the left and it supports 4G LTE but I'm not sure if it supports um, Lowe's 4G. I'll be putting that to test in my full review so be on the lookout for that. Anyway, there's a volume rocker and um, power button to the right. On top there's nothing but beneath you have um, the speaker grills. <laughs> Now beside the speaker grills is the micro USB port and during my test it took me about 3 hours to charge from 0 to 100 which is surprisingly not that long considering the fact that this comes with a 5000 mAh battery and guys here's a breakdown of how long it actually charges. And talking about battery capacity, I actually used this throughout the day and still got you know, some battery juice left that could have taken me throughout the next morning. Now guys, it takes about 28 seconds to power on this device, placing it right below the um, Infinix S4 on the leaderboard. Now once you power it on, the display comes into play, obviously, and sadly it is a 720p display. I wasn't expecting anything bigger, <laughs> so I'm not I'm not disappointed considering the fact that this also cost thirty seven thousand era. But I must say that I actually like the color tone on this device. It looks slightly brighter than what you get on the Hot Seven or say the Spark Three. Now on the UI front, you get the latest XOS that comes preloaded with a lot of ads from you know bloatware applications. Now you can actually uninstall some of these bloatware applications, but there are others that cannot be uninstalled. 
And talking about installation, I actually like the fact that um, Infinix is using files, that's the one from Google, as their official files manager. For one, it is quite light, coming in at 7 MB, and it is also quite efficient than most inbuilt file manager applications. And once again, it is owned by Google, so it flows seamlessly with other applications. Anyway, as far as the OS and UI affect the storage, you'd have about 23.9 gig, let's just say approximately 24 gig, of available storage to use. You also get um, face unlock to go with the fingerprint sensor. Now still on the UI, you can actually choose to customize the navigation button. There's um, something like game mode on it. I think Sean is spotted in the notification panel. And finally, you have like an inbuilt um, D-Rack to optimize the audio as well as other little, little tweaks that you can do on this guy. Now the last thing I want to talk about is the processor and you're getting a um, A22 processor along with 2 gigs of RAM. Quite underwhelming but once again the price tag on this thing is the saving grace. Now as you'd expect there's a lot of noticeable lag when playing intensive games. I wasn't even able to run an Tutu benchmark on this guy. But on a good note, um, the Infinix Ort 8 is quite okay with handling light applications or games. So guys, there you have it, my unboxing and quick review of this guy. So if you're like on a steep budget, then this is a phone to definitely consider because it comes with a lot of pros, although I also mentioned a couple of cons, but let me know if you're willing to live with it or live without it in the comment box. And yeah, if you, you know, find this video useful, don't forget to give it a like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in my next video, guys. Take care.